Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie and I want to welcome you back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity Videos Tutorial Series. In this video, we're going to dive into constructors, but before that, let's look at the last task I gave you. The last task I gave you was to convert the alien struct to use all its getter to convert all its getters and setters to use properties. All right. So we're going to delete all these here. And then what we're going to do is simply make these public. So I'm going to change this this from private to public, like so. And now after the name of the variable, I'm going to put in a brace. I'm going to put get and set, just like that. And I can get rid of that semicolon there. From there, we'll just simply change it like this. Now they're all looking alike. And I will change the public variables like this so that they're now capitalized. Now this is breaking because we've changed the way how other code can interact with the alien object. We can simply fix this by changing it to is alive. And now we'll do an equal sign like that. And you'll see this compile error is gone. Now let's change the hit points. We'll say hit points equals one. And we'll have point value equals 100. And now we have to change our getters as well. So we're referencing. We're just removing the get from everything. And look at that. Oops. And finally, we have to remove the parentheses. There, we'll build and run. And now everything works as before. Let's return back to Unity. We'll just simply start it back up. And we'll disable the cube. And here we have our alien. In fact, the alien is working the exact same way as it was in the first video of this section in structs, but yet we've covered a lot of ground since then. In this video, we're going to be talking about constructors. And constructors are a way for you to create your object and initialize all the fields inside of it. When you create a new object, you put the, ob the object's name followed by parentheses. Believe it or not, that is a constructor. There are going to be times, though, when you want to provide default values into that object. Right now, we've been creating the object and then assigning values to various properties after the object's creation. But rather, you can do it at the time of creation. Not surprisingly, this is a rather broad topic, and it can get a little bit complex. So I've broken this up. We're going to be covering constructors specifically for structs in this video tutorial but we'll be revisiting the topic when we start working with classes. The nice thing about structs is that we get a default constructor and we can add our other constructors to it. The way we define a constructor is that first we provide an access modifier. Now, some of you may be wondering, why would you ever want to have a private constructor? And believe it or not, there are reasons for this, but we'll be covering that later in this series. But for now, we're just going to be working with public constructors you don't have to provide a return type. And the reason for this is we know what the return type is. We're constructing this object and this object is the return type. And then we provide the name of the object. Once, you ha once we have that in place, we'll have an open parentheses and a closed parentheses. This should look familiar. This is exactly like working with a method. We're gonna provide all the parameters of that constructor. At this point, we can put an open curly brace and a closing curly brace. And all our initialization goes within those curly braces. But here's the thing. When working with structs, we have to initialize all the fields within our constructor. If you don't do this, what will happen is you'll get a compile error. After that, congratulations. You have a constructor. And you just simply call it like you've done before, except now you're passing in parameters. Another nice thing about constructors is that we can have more than one of them. And this is useful. Say, for instance, you want to construct an object with just one parameter, but then there might be other times when you want to provide two parameters and then set the default values of other values based on whether there is a parameter or not. And you can create as many constructors as you want. Oftentimes, when creating constructors, you want to call other constructors. For instance, let's say you have a constructor that has two parameters and another that has one parameter. In the constructor that has two parameters, you may want to call 
the first constructor that has one parameter and then set the other parameter yourself. What this does is it allows you not to repeat yourself. You're not rewriting code all over the place and you're relying on other code that has already been written. When working with properties and constructors, we're going to need to call the base constructor. The way we do this is after our close parenthesis in our constructor definition, we provide a colon and then we provide the keyword this followed by an open parenthesis and a close parenthesis. This is actually calling the constructor. And depending on what constructor we want to be called, we provide the values into those parentheses. Let's see this in action. Okay, here we are back in mono develop, and here we have our player object. I want to take this struct and add a constructor to it. So underneath my fields, I'm going to create a constructor. I'm going to call this public, and the name is going to be player, like so. And it's going to take the lives, it's going to take also the name and the score. So we're going to pass in all this information. And then I'm going to put an open brace and a closed brace. Now you'll notice when I try to set the lives, I'll call this dot lives because I'm referring to the, the object and I'll put lives like here. You'll see that we're trying to call the lives. And we're getting an error. What we have to do here is call our base constructor first. And to do this, I'm going to put a colon and then I'm going to put this followed by parentheses. Now I've called my base constructor, the compile error goes away. I'm also going to set up my name and my score. Now I have my constructor. I can also create another constructor. Let's just say we're working with just the score. So we can put player like so, and then I'm just gonna put the score here. At this point, I'm gonna call not my base constructor, but I'm gonna call the constructor I just made. So we're gonna set the lives to default to three. We're gonna set the name to unknown. And we're gonna set the score to zero. And now here, I'm just going to reset this score to the value that was passed in. I can also take the score here and pass it in like this. And now we have what looks like to be an empty constructor. But in essence, what we're doing is we're piggybacking on this constructor over here. We're using code in an efficient way. And now when I return to Hello World, we have various different construction options available to us. I'll type new here and I'll type player. And then when I hit the parentheses, we can add in, you can see we can add in the score like that. Or we have other things too. We can put in the name. We'll say Barney. We'll put the lives as three and the score to be 100. Just like that. And if we remove this, like so, and we uncomment this, this will work exactly as it did before. I'm going to load up Unity. Oop, we have an error here. Now we'll return back to Unity and we'll start the game. And if we disable our cube and you can see Barney scores 100, lives are three. And you can see how using this constructor makes our code concise versus creating a new, as opposed to creating a new object like here and then assigning the variable, then assigning the values to the variables after the fact. All right, now on to your task. All right, in your task, I want you to do the same thing I did for the player object, but for your alien object. I want you to create a constructor that takes one parameter and another that takes three. All right, well, that's the end of this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'll get back to you when I can. And if you like this video, feel free to give it a good thumbs up. 
All right, everyone, in the next video, we will be covering interfaces. Exciting times ahead. All right, everyone, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. See you then.